Greetings hockey fans and welcome to my creation, NHL Origins 93. I know that may seem, seem strange and to those of you who are familiar with this particular game that you are seeing right now, it is quite obviously NHL 94 on the Sega Genesis. However, thanks to a little program that I discovered called Nose, NHL Old School Editor, I have gone ahead and I have edited every single team in the game. I actually had to leave out a couple for what I'm doing. I had to leave out Anaheim, Florida, Ottawa, and Tampa Bay. But all the other teams, I took the players uh, from the 1992-93 season, and I put them all on the teams for which they started their NHL careers with. And I uh, went ahead and I edited all of their stats so that uh, it would represent their best offensive season uh, when they were with their original NHL team. And basically what I ended up with was 22 teams. Unfortunately, I could not do Ottawa and Tampa Bay as they only had about four or five players each. And I didn't want to have to go ahead and throw in 20-some-odd uh, players uh, who did not play in the 92-93 season. And I did add a couple for some teams. San Jose in particular, I had to add six. And I found that was acceptable. But Ottawa and Tampa Bay, I just could not justify it. So essentially what I am doing here is I have taken the uh, schedule from the 1991-92 season and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and play that season uh, with these teams that I have created. And I'm uh, starting off here game one, we have the New York Rangers versus the Boston Bruins. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play this game. And uh, hopefully this, this goes well and if, if, if you know, I get if positive feedback, uh, more of these videos will be forthcoming. I also have uh, going to record all the stats from the games that I play on a uh, wiki space that I created, and I'm going to provide the link for that in my uh, video on the uh, on, on YouTube when I go ahead and post it. And uh, on the on the wiki on the uh, the wiki space for every single game that I play, I'm going to provide a link there for the uh, the game video uh, that I upload on YouTube as well. So I'm just going to go ahead here now. I'm going to play the New York Rangers against the Boston Bruins. Starting goal tenders for this game, for the Boston Bruins we have Bill Ranford, and for the New York Rangers we have Mike Richter. And I'm going to go ahead and provide color commentary as I go. Here we go. Nick Sandstrom coming down the side, Slim Wesley, uh, Dmitry Kvartnilov. In front, oh, Juno scores right away. I did not expect that to happen right away. We have Joe Juno is his first goal of the season. We're 11 seconds into the game here, and Richter has already been beaten. I did not expect that to happen so quickly. Of course, uh, Joe Thornton's uh, stats are based off his uh, really good 92-93 season where he had 120 points. That's why his rating is so high and he's on the top line. Steve Casper. Fergus, Fergus, the point is intercepted there by Mike Ridley. Ridley is coming down. Jenny missed him. Jenny missed him again. Shot, ran for the save. Sweeney up to Casper. Down the sideboards. Hit. Sandstrom coming back the other way again. And shot blocked by Greg Hoggood. Over to the side. Nope. Zubov intercepts the pass. To Ridley, Sandstrom. Side for Monte. Stop by Ranford. Jenny again. Fergus. Blocked. Went Ridley back the other way. Oh, nice save by Ranford. Greg Hoggood. Jenny. The players made a line change. Wind up in a second. And stopped. Jenny. Tying me up. Off the side. Set by Ridley. No, they did not make a long change. Then to Amante. Stuck by Ranford. Casper, Janney, Fergus. Intercepted by Brian Leach. Leach is one of only five players that are leading up 100 in this game. And he loops it into the features of his. And the checking line out here now is one centered by Mike Kuchelinski. We have their second line out there centered by Darren Turcott. Number eight. We have Jeff Portnell from behind the net. Pass into the corner, intercepted. Kruszelinski over to the oh, he's stopped. And another number 18, that's Tony Granato. Not to be confused with Mike Ridley, the center on the side of the uh, first line. Randy Burridge stopped by Richter. And James Patrick is taking it back down now. And looks like I'm getting a penalty. No, 
they're getting a penalty. Probably Patrick will find out as soon as they touch the puck. If they touch the puck. And they do. Ledger picks it up. And it is, I don't know, it's going to be Tony Granato who's going off for two minutes. I guess I should point out now, one of the other things that I'm doing is um, there are no five-minute penalties in this game. So uh, whenever somebody injures another player, I'm going to attribute that as a five-minute penalty on the, uh, the wiki space. So if someone gets hurt, then the player who hurts him is going to go off for technically five minutes, even though it's only going to create a two-minute power play. And we have Joe Juno. This is a power play, of course, for me. This is, uh, who the heck is there? Oh, Joseph Stumple, that's right. Joseph Stumple. Oh, Sweeney just got robbed. Of course, Boston has two Sweeney's in this game. They have uh, Don Sweeney, the defenseman of 32, and they have Bob Sweeney, the forward who's number 20. I made sure that when I uh, edited these teams, I edited the lines in those, so every single player that I created, except of course for the backup goal teams, uh, will get to see ice time as long as there are penalties. And on that particular unit, uh, Bob Sweeney, uh, who was out there, that's his only, uh, his only line. The only time you'll see him is on power play unit 2. On power play unit one for me, I believe I had, who is it, 23, Steve Hines. Steve Hines is the, is the uh, player that I had here. And uh, the penalty kill unit for the Rangers, uh, except for one defenseman on each unit, is uh, players who are not in the regular lineup. And one of them right there is 32, is Corey Miller. He is not in the regular lineup. He only sees time on the penalty kill for the Rangers. And the puck now he's going to just shoot it down. Over, oh, stopped. And we're coming back the other way with Newman. Here's Don Sweeney. I love the two Sweeney's on Boston. I do not believe they are related. I've, oh, they've scored on me. Mike Ridley, his first of the season from Sandstrom. And that is with eight seconds left in the first period. Ha, <laughs> oh, wow. In real life, that would be a backbreaker. <laughs> Uh, I think I can recover from that one, though. Uh, momentum doesn't work quite as well <laughs> in uh, video games, or in the older video games, as it does in real life, uh, I find, anyway. But, uh, Stumple, stuff by Sanderson's Ridley again, this is, uh, top unit versus top unit. They have Stumple out there. Uh, in 92 93, he uh, did not have a very good statistical year in his first season. But I'm going with the stats uh, the year he had a couple years later. I can't remember the exact year, 1995-96, can't remember. He had a decent year that year, and that bump is rating up to 76 in this game. That's why he's on the top line there for Boston. And Sweeney, oh, they have a power play again. Oh no, number 20, Smolinski was the one I had on the power play. That's right, Sweeney's on the penalty kill. I got a little confused there. Yeah, I took the, uh, the players, their uh, the numbers that they originally wore on these teams as well, so some of the numbers are going to be doubled up and sometimes tripled up. As is the case with number 20 here on Boston, there are two players wearing it, and I clearly just got completely confused by that. Nathan Crimin. Uh, to Craig McTavish. Tried to get the Sweeney intercepted by Ledyard. Ledyard is taking it down, he's hit by... Tavish, Oblev out front of Patrick. All the way back to Richter. Oh, intercepted by Kvartnov. Passing it over. No, oh, couldn't get down Sweeney. And Koblev's taking it back up now for the Rangers. Out front, Ridley. That was dangerous. And I just go ahead and pass it right to Patrick. And the Krimen pass it up to McTavish. And we'll take it away. It's Kelly Miller. He is the only time he plays on the power play for the New York Rangers. Ran for the save. Let's get down here. Sweeney. He's knocked down. Richter now with the puck. And he holds on to it for the base off, which is good, because I want to get my checking line out there. Try and get everybody into the game as much as I can. And no, oh, I couldn't get that one through. Ooh, McCrimmon is tired. I probably shouldn't have went to the checking line. I was just out killing penalties. And the uh, defensemen that I use, uh, the two, the, well, the two defensemen that I use that are actually in the regular lineup on the penalty kill, I uh, take from the third line. 
I used the other four defensemen on the power play. I probably should not have put the third line out there, but Prim is clearly very tired after killing the penalties. So I'm going to go ahead here now and put out the top line. Juno back to Wesley, stopped Richter. You know, growing up, I always played NHL 94 on the uh, Super Nintendo. I loved the game. I absolutely loved the game. I still love the game. But uh, since I discovered the, uh, the one here on the Genesis, I, I had to say, I mean, this is this is much better. As fun as NHL 94 was to play on the Super Nintendo, it just seems to be a bit more realistic on the Genesis version. And it's easier for the defense to get the one-timers on, too. The bulk just got one off just then. Something that I noticed as soon as I started playing this on the, uh, the Genesis emulator. The defensemen are more active. And defensive and offensive awareness seem to mean more in this too. I uh, bumped up some of the defensive awareness of some of the uh, players here to get the ratings up. And uh, it works. It really works. Their, their defensive awareness is pretty high. Uh, sometimes it's, it can be pretty hard to get a pass to go through on the one-timer. And it's great because it makes it more realistic. It makes it a bit more challenging for me too when I'm playing. Grant Ledger with the puck. Sideboard to Kovalev. Stopped by Bork. Juno. Wesley. That's not who I want to pass it to. I want to pass it over to who's that? Stumple. Back to Juno. Richter with the save. And Zubov coming up. Ridley. Gardenlaw. Stumple. From Juno. Juno has two on the in the game now. From Stumple to Gardenlaw. Another thing you find with the NHL 94 is, uh, with the one-timers especially, it's quite easy for the, uh, the centers to score as opposed to the wingers. I'm going to try and, uh, and make allowances for that and try and get the, uh, the wingers more shots to uh, try and uh, make it more, make the point totals more realistic because otherwise the centers will have a lot of goals when normally they would have more assists than goals in real life. And as you can tell right now, I mean, there are three goals in this game who scored it for the, the Rangers, I mean, was it Ridley, I think? If it was Ridley, then all three goals were scored by centerman. If not, then just both of mine were scored by centerman. And we're going to the third period. 2-1 Boston. Monte is taking it down. Oh, that was a good chance. Good thing I blocked that. Fork up to Stumple. Going in the sideboard. Dodging for the Rangers. And back of the net. Good luck being back there. Trying to pass it back. Stopped. Ridley stopped. Wesley to Stumple. And I do have a preference for the one time. Oh, saved off the right off. I will do breakaways every now and then, though, especially to try and get some defensemen, uh, some goals and some shots where normally they would not get as many from preferring the one timer. But they will score on the one timer. I've been playing around with this. I did the playoffs uh, with the Detroit Red Wings, whose team is stacked on offense in this. And a boots in the third line. It's ridiculous how, how how good Detroit are in this that I made them. I don't even like Detroit. <laughs> so there's no bias there, no bias at all. And uh, they will score, the defenseman will score. I played a playoffs. Listrom had three goals, Chasen had a goal, uh, Zombo, Ladosur, uh, Konstantinov, all with goals. So they will score. And they will score on one timers. I think Lidstrom had two goals one game. It was Ridley, yeah, he did score the other goal. So Ridley now has two goals, Juno with two goals, and uh, no goals for anybody except for center. And that's something I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try and cut down on. It's way, way too easy for the, uh, the centers to score all the goals, and I don't want the center to score all the goals. There are five other positions they were on the ice there who can potentially score, and I want them to if they can. And there we have one right there. It's Jeff Portnell's first from Stefan Quintel and uh, Mike Kruschelniski. That's Portnell's first goal of the season, and now the 3-2 lead. The other thing I like about this sound um, the Genesis, the uh, computers, uh, the uh, computer AI is, is better. They can score. They can. And they're not garbage goals. They get assists on them. They score nice goals. I remember I got blown really bad a couple days ago. Oh, there we go. Stumple. Cartmont now with three assists. Wow. Stumple's first of the year. That's uh, another goal for the top line. Juno didn't get in on that, so he's still with two goals and no assists. Amante. Blocked by Don Sweeney. 
Don Sweeney up front to Janney. Janney was stopped. And from the owner is Mate over to Ridley. Knocked down by Casper. Casper over to Janney. Janney's coming in the side board, behind the net. Rangers tying him up over to the side and another goal. Tom Fergus from Janney and Casper as Fergus' first of the season. It's a 5 2 lead now for Boston. Surprised I'm actually dominating this. Usually I don't play quite this well, though I did. Uh, I did win one last night, it was 9-3 or something, so it, it does happen, but I usually don't score this many goals. Usually these games, and I expect them to be mostly low scoring. Zubov and intercepts it up to Sandstrom, down to Amate, stopped by Ranford. Zubov intercepted. And Amate coming back down the way. Ooh, Twin Cal stopped that in the worst way possible. In the face. In the face! Brad McCrimmon again. He looks like he has a little bit more energy than the last time I noticed him. Out front. Stopped. And there's Alex Kovalev. Up to Darren Turcott. Turcott. Behind the net. Kovalev again. I can't seem to hit him. Ranford stopped him though. Quintel intercepted. Back down to uh, Kovalev again. And we have McCrimmon. Quintel. And that pass misses. That's going to be an icing. Nope. Richter touches it for some reason. Renato down to Turcotte to Renato. Shot stopped by Ranford. Up to Portnell. And that pass deflected. We have Kovalev coming down. Renato with it again. Down the sideboard. They like coming down the sideboard, it seems. Back to James Patrick. Over to Grant Ledger. Courtnell with it. He's already scored once. He gets it down the sideboard. Up front. Didn't work. Burgess pass was stopped. Kovalev up to Turcotte. Turcotte to Kovalev, stopped by Ranford. And Quintel moving it up. Looks like this game is officially done. Burridge with it down the side boards. Rangers cannot come back now. I'm going to win this game, and I'm going to get a penalty, it seems, to end the game. It is futile, of course. Goaltender interference is the call. Randy Burridge, it's his first penalty of the season. And now I'm going on the penalty kill for the last 37 seconds of the game, unless they score. And I don't mind if they score, because that just means more stats. I want to see how many goals these guys can score. Some of these guys have had impressive offensive seasons when I uh, made this game, not just Gretzky either. Some of the, uh, some of the newer uh, generation would not uh, think of, guys like Bernie Nichols. And this game is going to be over, and it is over. 5-2. Well, thank you for tuning in, and if I get positive if I get uh, positive reviews for this, it seems like uh, people are interested and they want to see more, I will definitely be recording more. This is just game one of three, or uh, game one of three for the first day in the schedule. The other two games were also original six uh, matchups. They did that in 91-92. In 92 they had special, uh, I guess you would call them throwback jerseys, so that's why on opening night they had uh, the six original six teams uh, facing off against each other, and nobody else played that night. So the next game is going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens, if I actually go ahead and do that. But I just want to thank you all for tuning in right now, and well, it's going to a highlight. That's fine. Hey, good for the Leafs. I just wanted to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.